हेलो गाइज आई एम डॉक्टर रविंद्र सावरकर एंड आई वेलकम यू बैक टू मेड स्कूल दिस इज पार्ट थ्री ऑफ द सीरीज ऑफ बेसिक्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोकार्डियोग्राफी इन पार्ट थ्री ऑफ बेसिक्स ऑफ ई सी जी वी विल लर्न अबाउट नॉर्मल ई सी जी दैट इज अबाउट डिफरेंट वेव सेगमेंट्स एंड इंटरवल्स इन ई सी जी इफ यू हैवंट वॉच पार्ट वन एंड पार्ट टू ऑफ बेसिक्स ऑफ ई सी जी दिस वीडियो कैन बी अ बाउंसर फॉर यू सो आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू प्लीज वॉच पार्ट वन एंड पार्ट टू फर्स्ट then only watch part 3 link for the same is given here you must be familiar with this complex this complex represent electrical activity of heart first wave in this complex is p wave it is small rounded symmetrical wave with blunt tip it represent depolarization of atria first negative deflection after p wave is called as q wave first positive deflection after p wave is called as r wave first negative deflection after r wave is called as s wave these three waves combine form qrs complex it represent ventricular depolarization qrs complex is smooth without any notching or slurring and tips are pointed next wave is t wave it is small rounded with blunt tip it is asymmetric in shape with descending limb having sharper slope than ascending limb it represent later part of ventricular repolarization u wave is small rounded wave found immediately after t wave now let's understand how these waves are formed in ecg let's see how p wave is formed p wave is best studied in lead v1 and lead 2 as discussed in previous video right atrial depolarization starts before left atrial depolarization vector for right atrial depolarization is directed toward v1 electrode hence lead v1 shows positive deflection left atrial depolarization starts after a slight delay and its vector is directed away from v1 electrode hence lead v1 shows negative deflection hence p wave in lead v1 is biphasic with initial positive deflection and terminal small negative deflection vector formed by both atrial depolarization is directed toward positive pole of lead 2 this lead shows positive p wave initial part of wave is formed by right atrial depolarization and terminal part is formed by left atrial depolarization combination of these two waves forms p wave in lead 2 normal duration of p wave in lead 2 is 80 to 110 milliseconds and its amplitude is up to 0.25 millivolt that is 2 and half small boxes for initial positive deflection of p wave in lead v1 normal duration is 50 to 80 millisecond and normal amplitude is up to 0.15 millivolt that is 1 and half small boxes for terminal negative deflection normal duration is up to 30 millisecond and normal amplitude is up to 0.1 millivolt that is one small box let's understand the genesis of qrs complexes in horizontal plane leads as you already know from previous video that septal depolarization occur first and its direction is from left to right vector of septal depolarization is directed toward v1 electrode hence lead v1 show small positive deflection which is r wave this vector is directed away from v5 and v6 electrode and lead v5 and v6 show small negative deflection which are nothing but q waves vector for ventricular depolarization is directed toward v5 electrode for this vector lead v1 show negative deflection which is s wave lead v5 and v6 show positive deflection which are nothing but r wave lead v2 v3 and v4 does not show any deflection for septal vector for vector of ventricular depolarization this lead show biphasic deflections positive deflection goes on increasing and negative deflection goes on decreasing from lead v2 to v4 either lead v3 or v4 shows equiphasic deflection and that lead is considered as zone of transition where s wave prominence changes to r wave prominence 
in this picture lead v3 represent transition zone qrs vector is normally directed between 40 to 60 degrees in frontal plane let's consider a vector directed towards 60 degrees this vector is directed towards positive pole of lead 2 hence lead 2 will show complete positive deflection this vector is directed away from positive pole of lead AVR, but not completely opposite to lead AVR axis. Hence, lead AVR will show prominent negative deflection and small positive deflection. Lead AVL axis is placed perpendicular to vector. Hence, lead AVL will show equiphasic deflection. Lead axis of lead 1, AVF and lead 3 are placed within 90 degrees to vector. Hence, all these three leads will show biphasic deflections with prominent positive wave. Lead 1 and lead AVL are also placed laterally along with lead V5 and V6. Hence, lead 1 and AVL can show small Q wave. Let's consider a QRS vector directed toward 30 degrees. In this case, it is not aligned to any lead axis. Instead, it is placed exactly between lead 1 and lead 2 axis. Hence, lead 1 and lead 2 both will show tallest positive deflection that is R wave. Vector is directed exactly opposite to lead AVR axis. Hence, it will show complete negative deflection. In this case, lead 3 axis is perpendicular to vector. Hence, lead 3 will show equiphasic deflection. Lead AVL and lead AVF axis are placed within 90 degrees of QRS vector. Hence, they will show biphasic deflection, but with R wave smaller than lead 1 and lead 2. QRS complexes have a system for naming them. Larger wave in QRS complex is denoted by capital letters, and smaller waves are denoted by small letters. Like in this QRS complex, R wave is larger, so R is denoted by capital letter. Q and S wave are smaller, so they are denoted by small letters. In this QRS complex, Q is smaller, but R and S wave are approximately of equal amplitude. Hence, Q is denoted by small letter and R and S wave are denoted by capital letters. In this QRS complex, Q wave is larger and R is smaller. So, it is capital Q and small r. Similarly, it is capital R and small s. This is small r and capital S. Here, both R and S wave are similar in amplitude. So, it is denoted as capital R and capital S. When there is only one negative deflection, it is called as capital Q and capital S pattern. And when there is only positive deflection, it is called as capital R. If there is positive wave after S wave, it is denoted as R dash or R prime wave. It is also denoted by small or capital letter depending on its amplitude. QRS amplitude is affected by multiple factors. Amplitude of QRS complex is normally greater in precordial leads than in frontal plane leads. Amplitude is greater in lean person than in obese person because there is less intervening insulation tissue between electrodes and heart. Amplitude of QRS in particular lead depends on direction of QRS vector in relation to its lead axis. This is why there is no normal range as such for QRS amplitude. Normal QRS duration is usually 80 to 100 milliseconds, but up to 120 milliseconds is considered normal. Duration of Q wave should be less than 30 milliseconds to be considered as normal. Its amplitude should not be more than 0.05 millivolt, that is half small box. Normal QRS axis is directed within plus 40 to plus 60 degrees in frontal plane. Let's consider a QRS vector directed toward positive pole of lead 2. T wave represent late phase of ventricular repolarization and direction of spread of repolarization in ventricle is exactly opposite to depolarization. 
सो लॉजिकली टी वे वेक्टर शुड बी डायरेक्टेड एक्जैक्टली अपोजिट टू क्यू आर एस वेक्टर दैट इज अवे फ्रॉम पॉजिटिव पोल ऑफ लीड टू इन दिस केस बट हियर वी आर इग्नोरिंग द फैक्ट दैट इफ डी पोलराइजेशन इज कंसिडर्ड एज पॉजिटिव वेव देन कंसेप्चुअली रिपोलराइजेशन इज अ निगेटिव वेव निगेटिव वेव गोइंग अवे फ्रॉम पॉजिटिव पोल ऑफ लीड टू इज नथिंग बट अ पॉजिटिव वेव कमिंग टूवर्ड्स इट हेन्स टी वेव वेक्टर इज यूजली डायरेक्टेड इन सेम डायरेक्शन एज क्यू आर एस वेक्टर बिकॉज ऑफ सेम डायरेक्शन ऑफ वेक्टर टी वेव इज इन द सेम डायरेक्शन एज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ मेजर कंपोनंट ऑफ क्यू आर एस कॉम्प्लेक्स इट इज निगेटिव इन लीड ए वी आर इट कैन बी निगेटिव इन लीड वी वन इट इज अपराइट इन लीड वी टू टू वी सिक्स and amplitude of t wave in lead v1 is always less than the amplitude of t wave in lead v6 u wave is a small rounded wave just after t wave it is best seen in mid precordial leads that is lead v3 and v4 and sometime in lead 2 its axis is directed toward 60 degrees in frontal plane it is seen prominently in athletes source of u wave generation is not confirmed but it is thought to be generated by repolarization of papillary muscles let's have a look on segments in ecg segment between end of p wave to start of qrs complex is called as pr segment it represent av nodal delay pr segment can deviate from baseline in atrial ischemia Segment between end of QRS complex to start of T wave is called as ST segment. It represent early repolarization of ventricles. It follows the baseline in its initial part and then sways upward to merge imperceptibly with ascending limb of T wave. As you all know, it can deviate from baseline in ventricular ischemia. Segment between end of T wave to start of p wave of next heartbeat is called as tp segment it represent electrically silent interval between two heartbeats as it is electrically silent it does not deviate from baseline in any pathological condition that's why this segment is used as a reference isoelectric line deviation of other segments from the baseline is measured using tp segment as reference In extreme tachycardia TP segment is shortened to such an extent that T and P wave almost merges with each other In such cases junction of PR segment with QRS complex is used as isoelectric reference point This point is called as E point Junction between QRS complex and ST segment is called as J point This point can be elevated physiologically and mimic ST segment elevation. Interval is formed by combination of segment and waves. Interval from start of P wave to start of QRS complex is PR interval. It indicates time taken by electrical impulse to reach ventricles. Normal duration of PR interval is between 120 to 200 milliseconds. short pr interval that is less than 120 milliseconds indicate pre excitation syndrome and prolonged pr interval that is longer than 200 millisecond indicate av conduction blocks st interval is between end of qrs complex to end of t wave interval between start of qrs complex to end of t wave is called as qt interval it indicate phase of ventricular depolarization and repolarization combined qt interval is of great clinical significance as long or short qt interval makes patient vulnerable for development of ventricular arrhythmias qt interval duration changes with heart rate hence for standardization corrected qt interval is used it is denoted as qtc formula for qtc is qt in millisecond divided by square root of rr interval expressed in seconds for example if rr interval is 800 milliseconds then in formula value used is 0.8 q 
QTC duration is normally between 350 to 430 milliseconds. RR interval is between TPOP to consecutive R waves. It is used to calculate heart rate. PP interval is between two consecutive P waves. It is used to calculate atrial rate in atrial flutter and complete heart block. Thank you for watching this video till the end. If you have any query or suggestion, please write it down in comment section. If you like my work, please like this video and share it with your friends. To get notified about the next video upload, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Till next video, take care and keep learning.